This is just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous elderberry tree. As you can see, look how beautiful those berries are. And I'm pulling the limb down. And there's other limbs that are slap full of elderberry elderberries here. This tree is a little larger. And I'm standing, I'm standing on my forklifts to get this high. I'm not standing on the ground. This tree starts down the bank, not too many feet below the the road level here on the ne next to my lake, but they say they grow between six and ten foot tall. This tree is taller than six or ten feet tall. This tree is more like 13 or 14 feet tall. I'm blessed. This one here has been here for years. I've protected it and I can say I'm thankful that I have. These elderberries, some have already been eaten if you can tell by the birds. And so it's time to pick them as quickly as possible before the birds get all of them. And uh, trying to hold it up there so you can see it well. But it's also easy to root these plants. All I have to do is just cut it off about right here. And I'd actually cut it off right below this stem here right in here and then what I do is I'd break these two limbs off I'd break these off I would leave these above the dirt right here so I'd have two sets of nodes below the dirt and have the rest of it above the dirt when I'm propagating and it doesn't take long at all to root these and get another plant going and this is just a beautiful beautiful specimen uh, and it and literally the elderberry tree down here at the bottom is probably about five inches in diameter so it's about about this wide at the bottom and um, so it's been here for several years and uh, you see my dog is making a lot of noise as he gets into the water but we're going to be making some elderberry syrup and elderberry jam maybe make some pies out of it this is extremely healthy uh, extremely healthy berry not only does it have vitamin C but there's something that, it may be a word that you are not used to hearing. It's called kersetin. Kersetin is in elderberry. And you heard during the pandemic stages where we are told uh, to fight off uh, COVID or to fight off uh, uh, COV-2 or COV-19. And you, you see the different things that now the NIH and... Um, and all the agencies are actually saying it works. Cursetin is very important. Why? Because zinc and vitamin C and vitamin D3 are extremely important for your health when you're going through an immune need during the time that you are dealing with colds and flus and uh, infections such as that by viruses. It's also very well uh, suited for preventable uh, measures when you're trying to stay well through this time of year. This is the end of summer. We're getting into the fall. It's time to boost your immune system and to live healthier. And you need elderberry. Elderberry is the go-to. It is absolutely the go-to. You can make a solution out of it by mixing. You want to cook it down. You don't want to do it raw. Um, you want to cook the berries down. Always cook elderberries down. Never eat them raw. And um, some some berries are okay to eat them raw. I would not suggest eating elderberries raw. They're much better for you health-wise to cook them. Some berries are better off if you don't cook them uh, because it preserves a lot of the nutrients in it if you don't cook certain berries. But elderberry, you want to cook elderberry every time, every time. Again, let me pull this down here so you can see it better. As you can see, the elderberry here beautiful right absolutely gorgeous berries gorgeous berries wow so they will stain your hands they'll come off very easily when they're ripe you don't want to eat green elderberries 
These are perfect right here. They come off very easy. And, um, and if you leave them on here long enough, they're going to dry out. And that's okay as well. You can let them dry out. You can rehydrate them by soaking them in water. And, um, but they're very high in vitamin C. And, um, and they're very high in quercetin. Quercetin, the reason I brought that up is quercetin will release zinc to be able to be absorbed into your body better. Um, because if you don't have quercetin, when you're, um, when you're taking zinc, zinc is very important for your immune boost, along with vitamin C and D3. But if you don't have quercetin with it, you can get quercetin from other plants. Elderberry is packed with quercetin. It's packed. It is rich with quercetin. Quercetin is like the key that unlocks the zinc in your nutritional formulas. If you don't have anything but zinc going into your body, your body does not want to absorb zinc. It's just a mineral, yes, but it's a mineral that your body doesn't naturally want to bring in. So you need zinc and quercetin mixed together. The elderberry has plenty of has plenty of the quercetin in it. There are some other plants that I want to show you that are very high in vitamin C and the other nutrients that you need, the vitamins that you need and the minerals you need to be able to get through flu and cold season that will absolutely help you sustain your health. And this is going to be a quick video today going through some of this process of natural plants that you'll find on your farm or in your backyard. And, um, and I think you'll actually enjoy the taste of all these. The ones I'm going to suggest to you today, all of them taste great. Pine needles are extremely high in vitamin C, but some pine needles are toxic. I've been seeing a lot of videos online, especially on YouTube, where people have been talking about making pine needle tea and they're just going out to any old pine tree and picking the pine needles and saying to make the pine needle tea with it. That is not smart. There is a lot of pines out there that are good for you. There's a lot of pines out there that are not good for you. Some are extremely toxic. The loblolly pine is extremely toxic, and I'll show one of those to you here in a moment. This is not a loblolly pine, but it's not going to be the best selection to make sure that when you're giving instruction or you're taking advice to go out and make pine needle tea, you want to know what kind of pine that is obvious that you're not going to grab a toxic pine needle. Now, excuse my noise, I got a, a child here that is a, a eight, nine month old Labrador that absolutely is very, very active. And, uh, and that's okay, that is okay. So let's take a walk down through here and look at the different pines. This is a white pine. Can you tell from the lighter color of the pine? And look at the difference in the needles. You see the difference in the pine needles? Now, if you were to pull a pine needle section off of, of, of the, the leaf here, this is uh, the needles, this is considered a leaf. And um, the way you can determine if this is a white pine or not is, um, is you have to look at the way that the pine needles grow or you have to look at the way the tree grows. Let's look at this other pine down here that's a white pine. It shows very clearly. It's out on the edge, so I can show it to you very easily. This is a white pine as well. Again, look at the bark of the white pine compared to the bark of another type pine tree. Much different. And also look at the limb structure. You can see that the limbs all come out at a ring around the tree. And then you come up a few feet and it does it again. And you go up a few feet and it does it again. That's the way a white pine grows. The forest pines and the loblolly pines, longleaf pines, all grow with sporadic limbs. They do not grow the same way as a white pine does. Now, also when you pull the needle from a white pine, if you pull just one section of needles off, one section, you're going to have five needles every time. Five. Every time. When you pick the needles of another type pine, you're not going to get five needles. You're going to get a different count. 
this is the kind of pine needles that you want to use when you make pine needle tea which is extremely high in vitamin c very very high and it tastes great you steep the pine needles what i do is i grab a bunch of them i usually get the ones on the end that are the freshest the youngest on the end of a, a new limb and let me show you how you can tell when there's a new limb this is the woody part of the limb that grew last year this is the part that grew this year can you see the difference this is a different color this is a younger limb this section here grew this year this section here grew this year this grew this year you can see it where the new growth is right in here so if i'm going to pull the needles to get the best selection for the best taste and the best availability of vitamin c i'm going to pull the needles from the new growth and all i'm going to do is pull several sections at a time and i'm going to collect enough it doesn't take much i'll show you about how much it takes to make a good cup of pine needle tea and uh smells great too i'm gonna get one little bunch and i'm gonna twist them break them into short pieces put them in some hot water don't boil it don't boil it just put it in the hot water i actually have a video on my channel here of how to make rose hip and pine needle tea and if you'll watch that video i go through this process of showing you how to make pine needle tea but you want to use white pine when you make the pine needle tea now let's go look at a couple of other plants that are very very high in vitamin c okay my battery's about to die but look here what we have we have staghorn sumac which you can make lemonade out of staghorn sumac sumac and aid look at all of it right here i have so much of it and it tastes so good you can make spice from it to put on your lamb or your fish it gives it a lemony taste and it's very high in vitamin c extremely high in vitamin c look at these beautiful cones from this staghorn sumac let me see if i can get up close here to you and if you were to lick these right now they would taste lemony they would taste um, a tart a tartness and they make such a great addition to your uh to your food as a spice you see it in the mediterranean a lot but they grow wild in different places all over the world including right here now there's poison sumac and then there's staghorn sumac or the sumac that's like this it's not poisonous this is safe to eat but what you do is you soak these cones you take these cones and you soak them into warm water for about two or three hours and it changes the color of the water kind of a pink color you can sweeten it with honey i'm trying to hurry that's why i'm out of breath i'm trying to run around and show you all this vitamin c here today extremely high in vitamin c very healthy and look at the abundance of it i have probably 300 cones right here in this one small section a lot of it a lot of it now let me show you one more thing here if i can get there before my battery dies because my battery is about to die I, uh, I ran the battery down trying to do the video today. But I wanted to show you one more thing. This is gonna be done with my iPhone, this last part. But this is what you call Cherokee Rose, Rose Hips. As you can see right here, all these Rose Hips. These are very, very high, extremely high in, um, in uh, vitamin C. And I have lots of them. Some of them have not turned red yet. Some of them are still green, as you can see. Some of them have turned red already. They're smaller, smaller than the typical rose hip, but they're gem packed high in vitamin C compared to any other rose hip. I am very, very happy in about a month from now, I'll be collecting quite a few of these and mixing them in with my pine needle tea and some, some honey and maybe mixing it in with some of my sumac and having a good nutritious uh, tea or sumac nade and, uh, and enjoying my health and keeping my immune system up. Keep it natural all the way. When you keep it natural, 
you have a better chance at having good health. As long as you stay natural, your body can heal itself. I've gotten a lot of walking in here today. Share with you a lot of information, but I didn't get into a lot of the detail on each of these plants. I'll, I'll do a breakdown of information on all these plants on my website soon. And, um, and then we'll, pro we'll probably do individual videos on different plants that can benefit you and that you can make tinctures from and even maybe show you how to make some tinctures from different plants. And, um, and we'll, we will be having our walnut hull tincture out and available on our website by uh, October, I think. And in October, I will be going through what I call a cleanse, um, a deworming, deparasite cleansing, a parasite cleansing with walnut hull extract that I've been making. And I'm excited about that. Very excited about it. Because uh, anytime you keep your body in check and you keep the parasites down, and you keep your nutrition high and your vitamin C high and your vitamin D and the vitamin B's and the vitamin A's and everything that you need as far as the zinc and the minerals that you need every day, the quercetin to release those minerals, you're going to see a difference in the, the odds that you have of staying healthy. Staying healthy is what it's all about. You only have one body and you can live longer, be happier, be stronger, and sustain better if your body and yourself is feeling well. When your mind is feeling well, that's probably because your body's feeling well. Or if your body's feeling well, it's probably because you're doing things right. And that's what we're here to help you with here at Welch Family Homestead. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us here and hope to see you subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And if you have already subscribed, welcome back. Watch all of our videos, help us out. Let's build this channel together and spread the joy of the Lord and the happiness that we have among our community of people who are seeking to live healthier, wealthier, and wiser. God bless. Come here. Come here.